Friends, today UPSC mains exam 2022 has started. The first paper is essay. And in the essay paper, as you know, section A will have four questions. Section B will have four questions. Out of the eight questions, you have to answer any two questions. Before 2018, in the UPSC mains essay paper, questions used to come from general syllabus of UPSC. Like one question on internal security, one on environment, any issue of environment, one on society, like women, etc. One on the polity or IR, like that. But from 2018 onwards, all the eight questions are philosophical type. General quotations, the quotes told by some philosophical thinker, poet, somebody, or they will pick up a statement from the newspaper article and they would give you a just, just some statement. Based on that statement, we have developed the essay. So, the scope of writing the essay is more. You can include the points from different subjects, current affairs, your own ideas, etc. So, this year also, the same pattern of last three years is followed. All the eight questions are philosophical, very general statement based type. So, in this video, I am explaining the first question. The first question. First question, friend. And in the next video, I would do second question. So, I would release a video for each question of the essay. So, total eight questions, I would be making eight videos. And in this video, let us discuss the first question that is forests are the best case studies of economic excellence. Friend, here, see, in today's essay paper, among my students, students of our academy, or general students who have taken guidance from me, I observed that very few students have attempted this essay. Most of them have attempted essay number 4, fourth question in the part A, section A. Now, this question can be, this statement can be interpreted in two different ways. And don't worry if your interpretation is not as per my interpretation, because interpretation will not really carry much mocks. What carries mocks is, Water interpretation you are able to make from this topic, you explain your interpretation, try to substantiate with substantiate with examples, ideas, current affairs, whatever. So, let me tell you my interpretation of the essay. Forests are the best case studies of economic excellence. That means, if you look at a forest, a forest is a good case study to understand the economics. That means, what are the qualities of the forest? characteristics of the forest, traits of the forest. So, in that way, the same characteristics, traits, qualities that you learn from a forest can be applied in the economy. So, in an excellent economy, in an excellent economy, whatever traits are there, you can see the same traits in the forest. So, forest makes a best case study for economic excellence. So, here you can also write that in a forest, you see these qualities. If these qualities are applied in the economy, the economy can be an excellent form of economy. That way also you can write the essay. However, I observed that some students who wrote this essay interpreted the essay differently. What they felt was how forests are useful for economic development, how the raw material from forest, how you know how the uh, forest can stop the climate change how the forest can benefit the you know health which will impact the economy the food from forest tourist revenue from the forest raw material from the forest medicines from the forest how forest will be helpful for economic development you understand this is the interpretation made by some students so here i wrote both interpretations the first interpretation is my interpretation that i feel that the forest is the best case study for economic excellence means Forest is a kind of you know, duplication of economy. Whatever you learn from forest can be applied in economy. It is called forest is a case study. That is my interpretation. But interpretation of some people is like forests are the symbol of economic excellence. That means if you conserve the forest, economic economy of that nation will be improved. So here they can write about COP21. Generally, you can write about uh, how green GDP, all those things you can write. But let me discuss my interpretation first. So, in this interpretation, what are the various points that you can mention in the essay? So, in this interpretation, definitely, what are the various qualities? 
or characteristics that you can learn that you can learn from the forest and apply it in the economy for creating an excellent economy will be discussed for example friend in a forest a forest is a natural ecosystem for example agriculture is an artificial man made ecosystem whereas forest is a natural ecosystem in natural ecosystem you know there is symbiosis between the organisms between organisms between organisms and non living organisms like for example non living means water soil sunlight these things and organisms can be flora or fauna what can you learn from them see from a small terrestrial unit to a large terrestrial unit or a small aquatic pool to a large ocean everything is a natural forest how how the nutrients are cycle how life cycles you can study how energy flows in the ecosystem from these things what can you learn to the economy or how can you interpret these qualities in comparison with the economy various sectors of economy how life evolves in the for in the forest and how one component of the forest affects the another may it be organism to organism or how non living entities will affect the living entities so all this is how we can compare it with the economy let us study that for example one thing you can study is resilience friends forests have great resilience even after the natural calamity like flood drought earthquake whatever after any kind of natural calamity forest fire whatever the forest can again bounce back they can again recreate whatever is lost water species are lost in the forest again they bounce back and they grow in the population again they stabilize so such kind of resilience is there among the forest do we have same resilience in the economy if similar resilience is there in the economy we call them as excellent economies the right economies but most of the economies globally are not resilient if a major crisis occurs crisis occurs the economies will collapse but some economies are resilient so like that we can compare so resilience is the ability to recover and bounce back so forests how the forests are surviving various catastrophes natural disasters similarly similarly in economy also if you can diversify the supply chains in spite of depending on a single sector or few supply chains if you can diversify the supply chains across sectors obviously because of diversity the economy will be stable will be more productive it can actually become more resilient any kind of shocks see for economy shocks may occur because of change in the demand or supply because of some war in some country or because of for example recent covid crisis or you know uh, because of political changes in the economy or in the in the country the political nature shifts or political leaders change then there may be some shock in the economy so all those things along with the natural disasters along with the hazards so economy should be able to survive these things economy should be able to adapt to these things resilient to these things that can be learned from the and from the forest ecosystem natural ecosystem for example during covid pandemic in economy certain sectors are completely eliminated some businesses are completely gone or almost you know shut down whereas some are able to survive adapt to the change for example certain economies though they are for 2 to 3 years during covid lockdowns though they temporarily have reduced in their revenues again they are able to bounce back after the opening of the economy so we can discuss any two or three sectors you can take that you know during the covid which are affected and also you can explain one or two sectors which are able to bounce back after the covid explain those things also friends from the forest we can learn how biodiversity will make the forest more productive more stable resilient how biodiversity biodiversity can be species diversity different species or within a species different genes genetic diversity so how it actually builds a healthy forest more biodiversity more diversity in the life in the forest will build a healthy natural ecosystem that makes it stable sustainable sustainable more biodiversity means you can sustain any kind of attacks or uh, a, you know long term long term it can stay without any kind of effect it can stand natural disasters like we discussed before and for example any kind of during disease among the forest if some species are eliminated because of some natural diseases 
that space will be occupied with other species. If there is less diversity in the forest and if some of species are eliminated, their place may not be occupied. But because diversity, some species are replaced by other species. Similarly, how can you apply it to the economy? How can you take the case study of the forest, biodiversity of the forest, you take as a case study, how can you apply it to the economy? Even economy also, we require more diversity. For example, take rural economy. In rural areas, India should not be depend only on the agriculture economy. We have to go for poultry, fisheries, piggery, you know, uh, honeybee cultivation. We have to go for apiculture, sericulture, uh, agro processing units. So we have to diversify the rural economy. Only that it will be stable, productive, sustainable. For example, due to climate change, if there are no rains for one or two years or very less rains, then there will be a drought. Agriculture will be suffering. During the time, the dairy sector, poultry sector can actually provide the economic buffer to the uh, rural population. In that aspect, diversity is very important, rural economic diversity. Then tribal economy. Tribal economy should also be integrated within the national economy. Tribal economy should not be looked at, looked at in an isolated way. In the overall economy of the nation, even the tribal economy plays a very important role. Just like how, how in the forest, natural ecosystem, there are some small species, some major species, big species. But small species are equally important, as important as the major species. Similarly, tribal economy is also important. Even the small cottage industries, micro, small, medium enterprises are as important as the heavy industries because they are all integrated. Each of them depends on the other. And in the overall economy, a country should not be based only on service sector or only manufacturing. There should be the right combination of agriculture, manufacturing, primary, secondary and tertiary. For example, India is trying to increase the contribution of agriculture in GDP to almost 16%, 20%. Manufacturing, we want to make 25%. Service sector is dominated in these two. So we should be able to balance all the three so that nothing can affect the economy in long term. And we have to promote the labor intensive sectors to create more employment, which we generally discuss in the economy also. So only then our economy will be sustainable, stable and productive, just like the ecosystem. That's another quality that we can learn from forest. Another quality is friends, symbiosis. Symbiosis means two organisms depending on each other, helping each other and thriving because of their coordination, cooperation. Like how you can see, for example, here I have taken example of bees and flowers and pollination. Bees depend on the nectar of flowers and flowers depend on the bees for pollination, for spreading their population. Similarly, in the economy also, we have to learn the symbiosis. For example, the waste coming out of one manufacturing unit should be used for another unit. Ancillary industries should help the major industries. So there should be such kind of cooperation, coordination. So in, in ecosystem, what we learn is all organisms depend on one another. Not only the bees and flowers, many organisms indi indirectly or directly are integrated in their lives and depend on one another. May it be food chain, food chain or nutrient cycling or energy pyramids, whatever. So because of that, the whole system will be benefited, not only those two organisms, whole system. When two organisms coordinate, one plus one will be three or four. That is called symbiosis. The benefit is more for the whole system. Now friends, the same symbiosis, how can you see in economy, what can you learn from the forest and how can you apply it in the economy? Our economy should have symbiosis. If symbiosis is not there, try to create symbiosis. Learn from the forest, take forest as a case study, learn from the forest, apply it in the economy. For example, in the rural areas, as I told you, diversity is important. Agriculture, based on agricultural products, you have to create agro processing units, manufacturing units, secondary units, so that for the agro processing units, farmers will produce more crops because they'll have demand. And because there is more production, agro processing units can get more raw material. That is called symbiosis. Similarly, for example, petrol refinery waste. In the refineries, in the, you know, the crude petroleum, when you refine, refine the petroleum, for getting the um, uh, kerosene, diesel, petrol, a lot of waste will be released, petrochemical waste. That can be used for synthetic industry, leather industry, rubber industry, cosmetic industry. That is also called as uh, symbiosis. So, like that you can apply, for example, all the small micro cottage, micro small and uh, medium enterprises, the ancillary industries are connected to the large units. The survival of the large units requires raw material from MSMEs. And MSMEs require demand from the large units, that's symbiosis. 
Like that friends, various sectors in the economy shall be connected. The agriculture, industries, services all are interconnected. That connection shall be established very strongly. So that all three thrive together, thrive together. Now service sector depends on the industries and agriculture. Friends, now the third thing that you can learn from the forest. Taking forest as a case study, you can learn adaptability. How based on the changing scenarios, conditions and climates, how natural ecosystems will adapt. For example, in forest, species based on the changes in the climatic conditions, weather conditions, the rainfall pattern, how species will adapt in different seasons, how species will behave differently. So similarly in economy also, for example to agriculture. In agriculture, when there is a drought, we have to go for water sensitive, for example drip irrigation, an example of micro irrigation, you have to adapt for such scenarios. For example, in the dry land area, go for dry land farming, for certain kind of soils, grow certain kind of crops. For example, you cannot grow the same crop for every climate, every soil, like that you have to adapt. Also climate is changing very fast these days, so agriculture methodology should adapt to the climate change, that you can learn from the forest. Even the manufacturing also, technology has to be changed, for example robotics shall be used, artificial intelligence shall be used, you know the internet of things shall be used. So based on the changing demand, changing demand, changing nature of the uh, surroundings, the manufacturing technology has to be changed. Service sector also should understand the changing demand of the clients and adapt accordingly. So adaptability is a very important feature in the economy, adaptability, that you can learn from the forest. And then friends the next one is. Identifying the complementary niche, for example, you might have heard about competitive exclusion principle. For example, if two species require same niche, then they cannot survive together, they cannot coexist. So the niche has to be slightly different for species, otherwise they will exclude one another. For example, in UK, as I mentioned here, see in UK, the red squirrel, after the grey squirrel came into the picture, the grey squirrel requires the same niche like red squirrel, so it gradually replaced the red squirrel. So the red squirrel, sorry, the red squirrel actually replaced the grey squirrel. Grey squirrel was previously dominant in UK, dominant previously. After the red squirrel has come, it is able to replace the grey squirrel because of the habitat loss for the grey squirrel. Similarly, if in the economy, two different sectors require the same customers, same raw material, the competition one of them may be excluded, eliminated. Hence if, if the economy has to learn that every sector, every business, every entity have to try to develop their own niche which is somewhat different from niches of other sectors. That depends upon understanding their strengths and weaknesses based on that. Friends that is what we can learn from the you know complementary Nietzsche principle of forest, taking forest as a case study. Even friends, if you, if you look at this minor concepts, invasive species, for example, water hyacinth, which is not a native of India, after it is brought to India, it has spread so fast, it is able to eliminate the local native Indian water flower species, water plant species. But in Bengal, the water hyacinth has spread like anything. That's why it's called terror of Bengal. It's able to invade and eliminate the domestic species. The same thing, you should be careful with such things. So as you should be careful with the invasive species in the forest. Similarly, you should be careful in the economy when the in foreign companies are coming to India. FDA is coming to India. You should regulate the person FDA. For example, for insurance companies, FDA is it 49%? For telecom, are we giving 100%? For airlines, are we giving 100%? Means you have to regulate the FDA. You have to ensure that the foreign companies does not replace the Indian companies. They should not affect the capability of Indians to manufacture. Indian service sector should not be affected by the foreign companies. That can be learned from the invasive species, uh, you know, the concept of uh, uh, forest, natural ecosystem. For example, some examples I gave is one is water hyacinth I gave, water hyacinth. Then in Australia, rabbits actually came from Europe. Europeans brought rabbits to Australia and once rabbits actually populate very fast, overpopulation, explosion, because of that the grasslands of Australia affected, then they have to bring a predator for the rabbit. So that thus you can learn, you can take forest as a case study to create an excellent economy. Now friends see, I told you, as I told you, even the Chinese dumping, Chinese are have the predatory pricing, Chinese are Chinese are dumping the goods in India, not only India across the world for very low prices, predatory pricing, which is affecting the Indian manufacturing units. Similarly, the, the solar 
panels war happened between USA and India, even the case went to WTO, World Trade Organization. USA is able to supply the solar panels for lower cost than the India. So Indian solar panel manufacturing units are affected because of that. they could not compete. So these things can be addressed. These things can be learned. Even for example, as I told you, SPC cannot be a same animal, same plant cannot live in different soils or different climatic conditions. Similarly, from that you have to learn in economy also, same methodology, same model cannot be forced on different regions or cultures or you know. Uh, background. For example, during Green Revolution 1965, indirectly the government has forced only rice and wheat cultivation throughout India. That has replaced many local varieties of food and it is successful only in a few states, Punjab, Haryana and Western South Pradesh. That's why learning from that mistake, Green Revolution 2.0, 2.0, what we are doing now is in every state whatever food, whatever agriculture crop is unique specific to that region, that state, we are encouraging, for example, West Bengal, we are encouraged jute, in Northeast, we are encouraged bamboo, in Rajasthan, we are the millets, like that. So, like that you can, economy can learn from the forest. Friends, forest is the best case study for excellent economies, that is the idea. Similarly, in forest, there are several stages. For example, in the first stage, when there is a bare land, lichens, and later molasses. So, gradually, plants, herbs, shrubs, plants and trees. So there is several stage. Similarly, economy also, we have to learn that in economy also, there is a natural stage of progression economy. First agriculture will start, gradually manufacturing, then service sector. So if any economy is neglecting agriculture or neglecting manufacturing, for example, take Pakistan. After agriculture, they went to service sector, right, service sector. They did not focus on manufacturing, hence their economy collapsed. India also, but India is decently doing good in the manufacturing, of agriculture went to manufacturing, then, industry, then service sector. However, manufacturing is not really emphasized like in China. China manufacturing is very well emphasized before going into service sector. India is slightly neglected. So we have to face the problems, repercussions because of the neglect. That's why now India is again investing in the industries, manufacturing infrastructure. So, just like how in forest, one several stage replaces another several stage, here also in the economy, there will be replacement and coexistence together. For example, for another thing, another case study that you can learn from forest is take mangroves. For example, if this is the ocean, this is the ocean uh, ecosystem, and this is terrestrial ecosystem, mangroves lie here. Mangroves is along the border of the ocean ecosystem and terrestrial ecosystem. Mangroves is a natural forest, natural forest. Now mangrove protects the terrorist ecosystem from the uh, you know cyclones or ocean storms, coastal surge protects. Similarly, in the economy also, because right now globalization is happening, globalization, any effect in the international markets may affect India. For example, 2008 subprime crisis that happened globally could not really affect India because Indian banks were not much exposed to the international uh, uh, products. Products like for example, uh, in those days, they have given the house loans, home loans. So India did not purchase most of them. So it not affected. Similarly, during the COVID time also. During the COVID time also, friends, how the international demand has fallen down, how it affected the Indian economy. So based, what we have to learn from here is, just like mangroves is a buffer from the ocean ecosystem to terrestrial, India, Indian economy should have buffer so that the global economic system, any failure should not really impact India. At the same time, the connection is important. Indian economy shall be globalized, but you should have the buffer. Like that, you have to learn, you have to learn from the forest. Even, uh, for example, if you exploit the forest beyond their regeneration capacity, forest ecosystem will collapse. Similarly, in the economy also, if you exploit the resources, the coal, mineral resources, water resources, if you exploit more than the regeneration, it will collapse the economic system in a long term. Similarly, in a forest, overpopulation of a species may impact the entire ecosystem. Similarly, in economy, if the population, for example, China and India are facing the overpopulation, of course it is good in the point of demographic dividend. However, they should be skilled, educated and should be healthy. But however, whatever the case be, overpopulation, population beyond a certain limit based on resources and technology, if population is beyond the limit, definitely it affects the economy. That we can learn from the nature, from the forest. 
For example, friend, this may look actually out of context because here this is not economy, this is technology, but you can sometimes tell examples out of the economy also because bullet train though it's technology, it actually affects the transportation and hence affects the economy also. What Japan, Japanese learned from the kingfisher? If you look at kingfisher, the kingfisher's beak, the kingfisher beak actually is like this. So when the kingfisher goes into the water, the spillage is lesser, sound is also less. It can easily go into the water, kingfisher. Similarly, when the bullet train is coming out of the tunnel into the atmosphere, huge sound and electric loss is there. To reduce the sound, the noise and, and electrical loss, they have built the bullet train the, the front part bullet train just like the kingfisher beak. So, you can learn from the nature, from the forest. For example, friends, in a forest, if you, if any one key species is uh, eliminated, it may have cascading effects. Similarly, in the economy, if some small, small industries or units are affected, they are eliminated, they may actually have the cascading effect on many other sectors, industries of the economy. But friends, I want to tell you, some students have interpreted the same essay differently. Some students felt that uh, forests are the best case studies for economic excellence means they felt that forests are very important for economic development. So I would say don't worry, you will not get less mocks. The only thing is you explain your understanding and substantiate it with good examples, that's all. I also recently Ministry of Environment, Forest and uh, climate change has notified the forest rules, the forest conservation rules, because of that this topic might have come in the essay of this year. And if you want to really interpret in this way, your answer should be completely based on other points. For example, answer should be based on, you know, how a forest will reduce the air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, in that way how it can create healthy population, who would be contributing the economy in the long term, means relating the forest with the economy. How forests provide, uh, you know, production inputs, how they provide goods, en environmental goods, uh, good water, good air, how food from the forest, you can take the food for economic development, fuel, medicines, and even the equipment for households, construction material, raw material industries, means how forests can provide various inputs for economic development, means if your interpretation is this way, you have to write these kind of points, basically, you have to write how different raw material, how forests are helpful for economic development, and how tourism also how forests can provide uh, ecotourism, which will add to the revenue of the nation, economic development of the nation, and how climate change can be controlled. Climate change is affecting the agriculture, population, lifestyle, health, and forests can actually, forests can actually reduce the climate change impact. In that way, saves the economy also. And also, for example, forests, in the runoff, water runoff, forests can hold, uh, you know, the soil particles and avoid siltation of river. If forest is not there, siltation of river may affect the navigation of the river or dams of the uh, dams built across rivers. Like there, for example, why COP21, what India has promised, why we want to increase the forest cover, how it will impact the economy of the nation. So, your answer writing should be in that direction, that direction, if your interpretation is in that direction. So, don't worry, any interpretation, write the points, substantiate the points, do not write only examples, write some theory, your opinion, your suggestions, what you can learn from that so that you will get additional marks. That's all friends, this is about the first essay. Now in the next video, I will discuss the interpretation of second essay and what points you can write. And in my explanation, I won't be really focusing on introduction, conclusion, no. I will just have a, you know, brief brainstorming session where I would just tell you what points you can write. Those points you have to organize, arrange them in an orderly fashion with continuation in order to get more marks. Thank you friends, see you.